Good afternoon, dear students. Let's start today's lecture from the lexicology. I'll prepare for you some PPT in order to conduct my today's lesson. Now, let's start, students. So, the theme of today's lesson is figures of speech. So, students, in this lecture, we will discuss about uh, what's the uh, figures of speech and uh, its types and other things. Now, let's first of all introduce the outlines of today's theme. So, the first outline is about the figures of speech and its features, and the second outline is classification of figures of speech and then about the types of the figs of speech like metaphor and similar. The first one is about the metonymy and synedeki, and the last one is about irony. Okay, students, now first of all, what is the figs of speech? So, a figs of speech uh, is a departure from the ordinary form of expression or the ordinary course of ideas in order to produce a greater effect. So here, look at this. Wow, it's raining cats and dogs out there. Look, so here it's raining cats and dogs is the, the fix of speech. And now let's move on. A figure of speech is a figurative language in the form of a single word or a phrase. It can be a special repetition and arrangement or omission of words with a literal meaning or a phrase with a specialized meaning not based on the literal meaning of the words. A figure of speech is essentially a word or a phrase used in uh, in a non-literal sense for rhetorical or vivid effect. Uh, now, students, whenever you say something but you don't mean in it literally, so you are using a figure of speech. Let's say you are about to head out to the store and your mother says, you better take a jacket. It's raining cats and dark dogs out of there. Does your mom literally mean animals are falling from the sky? No, here that it's raining cats and dogs, students means it's, it's raining heavily. So uh, here uh, you are not uh, you are you are not using the uh, you, are, you don't mean in a literal way, but you're you're using the fix of speech. Okay, so students, there are different types of fix of speech. They are classified according to their construction, resemblance, association, and contrast. So according to the construction, so uh, we have the two fix of speech. This is climax and anticlimax. According to resemblance, the similarity, there are similar, metaphor, personification, and we have um, apostrophe. And according to the association, metonymy, and synedeki. According to the construction, uh, there are antithesis and epigram uh, as a types of fix of speech. Now, students, let's learn this one one by one. So, from this slide, students, we can see it. so different fix of speech are based on uh, in a different thing like construction, resemblance, association, and the contrast. And the first one is about the similar. As you see, students, the similar is based on the resemblance, I mean the similarity. In a similar a comparison is made between two objects or different kinds which have, uh, however, one point in common. The similar is usually introduced by words like 
verbs as like, as, or so. Or sometimes the simula is expressed, the uh, suffix I see. Uh, as a heart, for example, look at this one. As a heart panthes after the water brooks, so panthes my soul after sea or God. Look at this. Or look, my dog is as smelly as dirty socks. So here we can see the similar. How we can define that this is similar. So mm -hmm, you're right, students. Here uh, the linking element is as as. We see these conjunctions. So they uh, are so express the they are uh, created to help us the similar. The next one, this pizza is as cold as ice. So here the uh, pizza, yeah, uh, and the linking element here as s. So this is one of the example uh, for the similar. And the next one, metaphor. A metaphor is an implied similar. It doesn't like the similar. State that one thing is like another or X as another, but takes that for granted and process as if the two things were one. For example, the camel is a sheep of the desert. Here, student, this sentence is one of the good example for the similar. And, uh, or uh, if you see the camel is like a sheep of the desert, so students, it can be similar. So most of the students uh, cannot differentiate the, uh, how can I say the, differentiate difference between the similar and metaphor. Now look at see this one. Every similar can be compressed into a metaphor and every metaphor can expand them into a similar. So we sometimes, we are sometimes confused to differentiate to this term. Thus, instead of saying, for example, Akash fought like a lion. Here, like a lion. Uh, because of like, this is similar. And we can say Akash was a lion in the fight. Here, uh, in the second sentence, is a metaphor. And now let's move on to the next one. So, personification. Students, personification is also based on the resemblance, I mean the similarity. And in personification, in animate objects and abstract notions are spoken of as having life and intelligence. So personification occurs when the author or speaker gives human characters to non-human objects. So students' personification is a fix of speech which transfers the people action to non-human objects, like for example, leaves or things or like that. Now let's see some of them. The, look at this example. Here we see the lightning. Yeah, and here this is mentioned. The lightning danced across the sea. So people can only dance or animal maybe dance, but not the lightning because lightning is a uh, non-human object. So uh, in the real life, it cannot dance, but in a personification, in transferring meaning, uh, we can tell the lightning danced across the sea. And, or this, look at this example, for example, the trees scream in the ranging wind. Look, these trees, uh, so the trees scream. Uh, can trees actually scream? No, 
that is a human trait, students. So the use of personification here gives a better description of the sound trees make it in a strong wind. So the personification is a good way to uh, express our emotions. Okay. Now, this is the trees in our imagination in this picture, and this one, uh, the trees in a real life. Let's move on to the next one. So metonymy. Students, metonymy is based on association, not the resemblance. In metonymy, literally a change of the name. So an object is designed, designed to be the name of something else, which is generally associated with it. So students in the uh, metonymy, uh, is an renaming such thing according to the association. So in our uh, common speech, we use a lot of metonymy. For example, I read, yesterday I read Murphy, but you don't, you didn't read Murphy. You have read or you read uh, the book by Murphy, yeah? Raymond Murphy, or for example, I love Navai. You don't like Navai. You love uh, books which were written by Navai. Here, for example, the crown. For example, uh, the word the crown is for king. We use this one in uh, as a metonymy so for king. And the next, look this one. Uh, Snedeki. In Snedeki, a part it is used to des design it, as a hood or the hood to design it a part. So most of the students are confused to differentiate the Snedeki and metonymy. Why? Because they are the both of them are um, based on uh, <clears throat> based on association. So sometimes we are confused when we differentiate the two, two of them. But the metonymy is renaming. Snedeki is uh, use something, a, a part is used to design the hood uh, and the hood to design a part. So there is a difference between them. For example, look at this one. Give us a day our daily bread yes give us a day our daily bread here bread is a part and uh, with the word of bread we mean students our maybe our uh, salary here uh, or um, our dinner like that or England here the English cricket team England won the first test match against Australia. Here the word England, the who uh, is used to design it a part. So it means the English cricket team. Or uh, for example, I cut my hand. So uh, to tell the truth, I didn't cut my hand, but my finger. Here's the word uh, hand is expressed uh, in order to design a part finger. So see that this is the Snedeki. For example, uh, for the metonymy, I want to give the word uh, White House. For example, uh, as you see, the White House is the uh, administration for the United States. For example, yesterday, White House demonstrated the new uh, law. So not White House, but the administration of the USA uh, demonstrated new law like that. Now the next move on, the next fix of speech. So
Irony. Irony is a mood of speech in which the real meaning is exactly the opposite of that which is literally conveyed. For Brast as an honorable man, so are they all, all honorable men. Look at this. This is a quote which uh, was spoken by Mark Anthony. Anthony. Uh, so this quote is reporting that Brast's a tyrant is an honorable man. However, Mark um, Anthony doesn't agree and uh, is saying that if uh, Brast is an honorable man, then everyone is honorable. In effect, he is no different than anyone else and is in that words. For example, uh, sometimes uh, we use that, for example, uh, teacher came into the lesson, but the students uh, were in silence. And when the teacher asked uh, the theme of, uh, for example, about today's theme, uh, and students were in silence. At this moment, uh, the teacher said, wow, my, how active my students are, for example. Here, uh, in the real life, uh, the students are not active. They are passive. They don't want to answer the questions. Uh, they are not ready for the lesson. But this moment, the teacher used the sarcasm. The teacher used the irony. It, uh, here, uh, the teacher mentioned, the pointed out uh, her or his students were not active. They are passive in a silent like that. So this is the irony. Or for example, the Titanic uh, is an unsinkable ship. But in the real life, the Titan Titanic sank. We know all of us this one. OK, so students, let's move on the next one. So the next one is apostrophe. An apostrophe is a direct address to the dead, to the absent, or to the personified object or idea. This figure is a special form of personification. For example, oh, stars and clouds and winds, we are all about to mock me. If you really pity me, crush sensation and memory. Let me become as not, but if not, depart, depart, and leave me in darkness. So here, students, we can see the uh, examples of apostrophes. So here, uh, the author just direct address to the uh, absent things, like, for example, stars, all oh, stars and clouds and winds. Here, the uh, author address to these things. For example, all oh, lovely orange, you golden treat. Oh, tell me why aren't you easy to eat? Here, uh, we address to the orange. The next one, hyperbole. So, um, hyperbole is uh, commonly used in everyday speech. Uh, for example, in a hyperbole, a statement is made empathetic by overstatement. So hyperbole means is exaggeration. For example, I have told you a million times, but uh, we have never told a million times, maybe three times or two times like that. But we here we exaggerate our sentence. We um, we try to express our emotions. So this is the uh, hyperbole. Now, students, uh, today, as you see, today we learn the fix of speech and types of fix of speech and fix of uh, features of fix of speech. I hope all of the students understand the today's theme. 
So if you have any questions, please text me via um, the telegram. So do your task via the model. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.